Recently, a lady came to our church on a Sunday morning. She came back on a Sunday night, and she asked her friend, which one of those fellows is pastor there? The guy that was loving and sweet on Sunday morning or the guy that was mean on Sunday night? Which one is the real Jack Hiles? Uh, if you are inclined to ask a question like that, I would not reveal my ignorance in public if I were you. Billy Sunday used to say, you can't love flowers unless you hate weeds. You can't love health unless you hate germs. You can't love God unless you hate the devil. And you can't love right unless you hate wrong. And so the, the, the opposite side, reverse side of the coin of love is hate. These little ambit, pambit preachers that never preach against anything, they don't love anything. That's a synthetic, superficial kind of a love. A love that says to their young people, I love you and doesn't warn them about rock music is not love at all. And so tonight, you're going to hear the other side of Jack Hiles. And without the side you'll hear tonight, there is no true, no, no uh, uh, veracity, no truth to what you heard this morning. And I want to talk tonight on the subject, keep your stinking feet out of my drinking water. Let me <coughs> read to you again, before I pray, just a w one verse. By the way, let me explain what this means. The word pastor means shepherd. A pastor is the shepherd of the flock. And uh, it's synonymous with the word shepherd. And when God <coughs> would scold his, his men who were not doing what they should do, he likened them to a shepherd who was not doing what he should do with his flock. In this passage in Ezekiel chapter 34, God is using this figure of speech, but he has his men in mind, and the way his men handled the people and the flock and so forth. And um, so it says, and I read this verse, As for my flock, now that's the people of God, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet. Now in the Bible, the Word of God is symbolized by bread. Uh, you, we, we feed on the Word of God. And then it says, And they drink that which you have, ye have fouled with your feet. And that word foul means that you have caused to stink uh, with your feet. He is saying you're like a shepherd uh, who has a flock of sheep, and you're corrupting the food by walking on it with your dirty feet. And you're corrupting the water by putting your stinking feet in the water. And he's likening that to God's men who dabble wrongly with the Word of God. The Bible is, is uh, likened unto bread, and the Bible is likened unto water. And uh, I want to talk to you tonight on that subject. Our Heavenly Father, I pray you to help me tonight. I I love these people so much, I must tell them the truth. And the Jack Hiles this morning that spoke of his love is expressing that love with the other side of the coin tonight. I pray you to help me as I do, please. Amen. I am bringing the type message that is not my favorite type message. My favorite type message is the kind I preached this morning. Just like it's more fun to take your kid to the zoo than it is to spank your kid when he's been bad. But uh, spanking the kid when he's been bad is necessary, as necessary as taking him more necessary than taking your kid to the zoo. Now, as I said a while ago, the, the heavenly father here as, as, as he uses the Holy Spirit, uh, uses the figure of speech of a shepherd and his flock. And he uses a shepherd that does not feed his flock with food that is pure, 
but rather feeds this flock with contaminated, contaminated food because he has trampled on it with his stinking feet. And uh, does not give his flock pure water, and the Bible is, is mentioned as a uh, symbol of, of, of water is a symbol of the Bible. And uh, so the whole issue here is the word of God. God is saying to his men, and don't, don't, don't leave me now, <coughs> God is saying to his men, he's saying, you leave the book alone. You leave the book alone. He's saying, keep your stinking feet off my words. Keep your stinking feet. You see, the word of God is, is the drinking water for God's people, the cleanser for God's people. And God says, you keep your stinking feet out of my word. And that's in the Bible right there. He says, you have fouled the water with your feet, and you have trampled with your feet the, the bread, the food. And God says, uh, keep your... Keep your stinking feet off of the bread and keep your stinking feet off of the drinking water. Now, let me put that down where you can understand it. I'd like to say to the Zondervan people that publish the NIV Bible, keep your stinking feet off of the Word of God. That's my drinking water. Keep your stinking feet off of my drinking water. I'd like to say to Broadman Press that put out uh, another false Bible, and I'd like to say to the Broadman Press, keep your stinking feet out of my drinking water. I'd like to say to the Nelson publishers who publish more false Bibles than anybody else, and whose owner I know personally very, very well, I'd like to say to Nelson publishers, keep your stinking feet out of my drinking water. The Revised Version is dirty water. The American Standard Version is dirty water. The New American Standard Version is dirty water. The NIV is dirty water. The Reader's Digest modern uh, revised or uh, condensed version is dirty water. The New King James Bible is dirty water. Gideon's quit serving dirty water around America. American Bible Society quit serving dirty water, contaminated by your stinking feet that have taken the pure word of God and changed it for a buck and changed it for a dollar. So-called Christian colleges take your stinking feet out of the word of God. Out of uh, good serving dirty water. So called Christian seminaries, uh, with your intelligentsia, which is nothing more than stupidity, uh, hiding behind the guise of scholarship, you keep your stinking feet out of my drinking water. Dr. Custer for Bob Jones University, who says that there's no perfect Bible in the English language, you keep your stinking feet out of my dirty water, out of my drinking water. Greek scholars, so called self styled Greek scholars, who are only called Greek scholars by other Greek scholars, you keep your stinking feet out of my drinking water. Oh, but you say, Brother Hiles, there are mistakes in the King James Bible. Okay, let's suppose there are, though you're not, that's not true. Show me the pure water then. I mean, show me the pure water. I've got to have it. If it's the American Standard Version, stand up and say the American Standard Version is flawless. Go ahead and say it. I'd rather you say that than say we have none. I mean, if the NIV is flawless, stand up and save you. I've got to have the pure Word of God. My Bible says I have to have it. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every... Hey, sit up still, you new evangelicals tonight, and listen to me scream at you for a while. You've called us nuts, let me call you a nut tonight. You've called us unlearned, let me tell you what a stupid idiot you are tonight. And I'm saying, get your stinking feet out of our drinking water. I've got to have it. We've got to have the pure Word of God. If, if the King James Bible isn't it, have courage enough to stand up and say, which one is pure? Our Bible says, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Every word, not every thought, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father. In John 15, 7, it says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Not my word, my words abide in you. And that's what you will. It shall be given you. In Deuteronomy 4.10, make them hear my words. John 14.23, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Well, if we're going to have his words, we've got to keep his words. We've got to have his words. I mean the pure, unadulterated words of Almighty God. John 12.48, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. John 5.47, how should ye believe my words? Luke 1.20. Thou believest not my 
words, Mark 8, 38, Whosoever should be ashamed of me and of my words of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Mark 13 and 3, My words shall not pass away. Luke 21, 33, My words shall not pass away. Isaiah 51, 16, I have put my words into thy mouth. Jeremiah 1, 9, I have put my words into thy mouth. Jeremiah 6, 16, I will bring evil upon this people because they have not hearkened to my words. How can you hearken to his words if you don't have his words? Second Peter 3, 2, be mindful of the words spoken to the prophets. Revelation 1, 3, hear the words of this prophecy. Revelation 22, 19, if any man shall take away from the words of the words of this prophecy. In Jeremiah eleven ten, they are turned back to the, their iniquities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words. Uh, Job thirty three one, hearken to all my words. Jeremiah five fourteen, I will make thy words in the, uh, in thy mouth fire. Exodus four twenty eight, Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord. Uh, and Exodus twenty four three. Uh, I'm sorry, Exodus 24, 4. Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. In Exodus 32, 44, Moses spake all the words of the Lord. In Jeremiah 26, 2, speak all the words that I command thee. In Psalm 107, 11, they rebelled against the words of the Lord. In Jeremiah 26, 2, diminish not a word. Hear that? In IV, folks, don't take a word out. Diminish not one word. There's got to be a book somewhere in this world that has all the words of God with not one word added, not one word taken away. I believe I have it in my hand tonight, but if this is not it, stand up and show me what it is. Psalm 119, 103, how sweet are thy words unto my taste. Psalm 119, verse 130, the entrance of thy words giveth light. Revelation 21, 5, these words are true. Jeremiah 25, 30, prophesy thou all these words. Proverbs 23, 9, a fool will, dis will despise the wisdom of thy words. Jeremiah 3, 12, go proclaim these words. Jeremiah 7, 29, thou shalt speak all these words unto them. Jeremiah 26, 15, speak all these words unto them. Jeremiah 51, 61, Thou shalt read all these words. First Thessalonians 4.18 Comfort one another with these words. Second Samuel 7.28 Thou art that God and thy words be true. Psalm 119.57 I would keep thy words. Proverbs 23 and verse 8 Thy sweet words. Jeremiah 15.16 Thy words were found and I did eat them. Psalm 55.21 his words are softer than oil. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've gone through Scripture after Scripture and told you that we've got to have all the words of Almighty God. I'm simply saying, get your stinking feet out of my drinking water. Don't fool with my drinking water. Don't meddle with my drinking water. Keep your stinking feet out of it. Don't add to my drinking water. Don't take from my drinking water. Don't change my drinking water. Don't diminish my drinking water. Don't condense my drinking water. Don't make my drinking water easier to understand. Don't touch my drinking water to change it. Don't merchandise my drinking water. And that's why you get all these Bibles. There's not one stinking publisher in America that putting these Bibles out because they want you to understand the Bible better. They're trying to make a buck. If, if, if Nelson Publishers, for example, listen to me, I'm preaching to you. Talk after a while. i got something to say to you. If the Nelson Publishers... Uh, if they think the, the Bible's uh, hard to understand, why don't they put out just one improvement, and they keep out putting improvement, 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 and they copyright it all, so nobody else can bless God. The King James Bible is not copyrighted. It's available to everybody. You've messed up the virgin birth with your stinking feet. You've messed up the sinless life of Christ with your stinking feet. You've messed up the deity of Christ with your stinking feet. You've messed up the blood of Christ with your stinking feet. You've messed up the imminent return of Christ with your stinking feet. Oh, but you say, Brother Hiles, the Bible is just hard to understand. 
you have got a hole in your head big enough to drive a Mack truck through. I did something last night. I, I took my Bible, opened it like that, and put my finger down. Just like I did then. I didn't know where it happened to open it. It says, hear you now what the Lord said. Boy, that's a tough one, isn't it? Boy, somebody needs to put out new behavior. Look at me and let, look at me like we have to look at you when you criticize our Bible. Let me tell you something tonight. America didn't have policemen in our schools. We believe this King James Bible. America didn't have a bunch of dope problems. Marijuana was almost unheard of when America believed this King James Bible. When the teachers in our public schools started off the morning reading this King James Bible, believing this King James Bible, and before a bunch of self styled scholars thought they could change the King James Bible to make a book, we had a nation worth something. Brother, we're not going to save this nation till we get back to every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father. <laughs> I just pointed to it here. Hear you now what the Lord said. Let me exegete that for you. Here's what you do with this thing right here. Ye, that's you, opposite of me. Now, that's not yesterday or tomorrow. What the Lord, that's the one up in heaven. Say it, it's what you do with your tongue. Now, you leave it alone. I opened my Bible yesterday, last night, and I came to put my finger down, and here's what I got first. The king of the north shall come. wonder what that means. It means the guy that's bought on the throne, it's up yonder that way, the opposite of the south, ain't here now, but he'll be here after a while. Hey, you scholar, you're not fooling anybody. You're putting yourself above the God who built this country on this book I have right here, right now. I opened my Bible and it said, The end shall not be yet. I wonder what that means. <clears throat> that means it ain't over till it's over. I opened it, put my finger down, and it said, They departed from the king. Let me explain that to you. That means they were with the king. I ain't with him no more. I am so sick of these guys that go to an institution. I've got more respect for a state university professor who says that the word of, there's no word of God than I have for a man who will hide behind the sacred desk and change God's blessed book. I don't like your preaching. I don't give a flip. I don't like your liberalism either. I don't like your compromise. I don't like your dirty NIV Bible. I don't like your dirty ASV Bible. I don't like your dirty new ASV Bible or your revised standard version of the Bible. I, I'm trying to say, you anybody that's got any sense can understand this Bible and you can't understand it. You've got the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you and He says He will lead you into all truth. So maybe you liberals don't. Maybe you ought to have a better Bible. It's very interesting to me. <clears throat> very interesting. <laughs> We fundamentalists can understand this one. You folks that call us dumb have to have an easier one. Now you're the intellectual. Maybe you ought to get some easier ones. I opened my Bible last night, put my finger down, said the house was filled with smoke. Let me exegete that. Don't criticize me, you liberals. You execute it. I'll execute it. V means it was just one. Got that? You won't take notes, you can. <clears throat> v means it's just one. House, that's a place where people live. Was means it ain't no more. Filled means there's no place in it that wasn't, didn't have the smoke. With smoke, smoke is something that comes from fire. I read the open Bible, and here's one. Thou shalt roast and eat it. Let me teach that one to you. <laughs> Sit still, new evangelical, and take it like a man. When you say, we just love the other Bibles, well, how come your, ch well, how come your church isn't filled tonight? 
Well, let me explain that scripture. Here's one I point my finger. They shall hunger no more. Oh, I like that one. Let me execute that. That that was written on Christmas night. Here's one. How long wilt thou sleep? Let me just open. I got. I, I'm not sure where it's going to fall open. Let me just open it tonight and see where it falls open here. It says, uh, "And them that escaped from the sword carried he away." Oh boy. Let me just open it again somewhere and see if I can find another scripture here. On the eighth day, he sent the people away. Well, what's that mean? Eight, that's right between seven and nine. Don't you sit there and look at me like that, you little Bible changer. How dare you rise up against the God of this book and tell him he needs some help to give us a Bible. Okay, okay. You say, preacher, I just don't believe the King James by the Word of God. Okay, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Father. If this isn't, if this isn't it, what is it? Find it. I've got to have it. I can't live without it. Well, let's see. Open over here. Let's see what it says. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, uh, men is often women. I mean, you queers wouldn't know that, but. Let me, maybe I am having more fun now than I did this morning. I'm saying I've got to have every word. I must have every word to live. I must have every word to get my prayers answered. I must have every word to receive Christ, the Bible says. I must have every word to keep him from being ashamed of me, the Bible says. I must have every word to prevent evil from coming upon me, the Bible says. I am to have, must have every word to be on fire for God, the Bible says. All these rich scriptures I read a while ago. I must have every word if I speak his message. If I didn't think I had a perfect Bible, I'd close this one, walk out that door, I'd never walk in a pulpit again. I have to have every word to love him, the Bible says. I have to have every word not to reject him, the Bible says. I have to have every word to meditate, the Bible says. I have to have every word to avoid the plagues of God, the Bible says. I have to have every word to have an eternal Bible, the Bible says. I have to have every word to be comforted, the Bible says. I have to have every word to have wisdom, the Bible says. I have to have every word to gain light, the Bible says. I have to have every word to preach, the Bible says. I have to have every word to have the truth, the Bible says. I have to have every word to get saved, the Bible says. I have to have every word to avoid evil, the Bible says. Quick, show me the real words. They must be a perfect Bible somewhere. Which one is it? If you believe it's the ASV, speak up. If you believe it's the new ASV, speak up. If you believe it's the NIV, speak up. But if, if you believe it's the, the condensed, uh, our Reader's Digest condensed version, speak up. If you believe it's the RSV, speak up. If you believe it's the New King James Version, speak up. But if we must have a Bible, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Father, that means only one is right. Now you say, Brother Howes, I, I, I have several versions. That's the way you always talk. I have several versions. Oh, won't you talk like a man? You have to warm up while you talk. I have several versions, and each version I have so have throw some light on the others. Won't you get saved? And the Holy Spirit will shed the light on the one we got here. Sure, I'm mad. You better know I'm mad. I'm as mad as a hornet because they're taking putting their stinking feet in my drinking water. <clears throat> tell us which one. And once you tell us which one, keep your stinking feet out of it. Okay. Now we've gotten on those that are not here. Let's speak to ourselves. Most of us will agree that this book here contains the very words of God according to Psalm 12, preserved to all generations. 
And yet, though there are, hundred, there are hundreds of people here tonight who believe this book, but you're dehydrated. We believe it, but don't read it. And ask a question, how much have you read this week? Boy, you like a guy to stand up here and let the other folks have it. Now it's your, now it's your time. You new evangelicals can sit up and enjoy the rest of the service because I'm I want to get on us fundamentalists. How much have you read this week? What is it? It's Christmas time. Oh, I would imagine the birth of Jesus should cause you to read more Bible than ever. We believe it, but don't learn it. We believe it, but don't meditate on it. How, how long have you spent this week meditating upon this Bible? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, that standeth in the way of sinners, or says, Receive the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. <clears throat> okay, you believe it. How much of it have you memorized? If somebody walked in tonight and put a gun to your head and said, Quote ten verses or I'll pull the trigger, would you be in heaven soon? You'd have to say Jesus wept ten times. Now, oh boy, we're fun a minute. We believe every word from cover to cover. Of course, we never open the cover. If this is the eternal word of God preserved from God Almighty, and it is the hope for our prayers to be answered, to receive Christ, to keep Him being ashamed of us, to be on fire for God, to fully obey God, to speak His message, to love Him, then God help us to get in it and read it and study it. Okay, we believe it. Teach it. Have you taught this book to anybody lately? You're commanded to. Bible says in Jeremiah 23, 29, it's a fire. Bible says in Jeremiah 23, 29, it's, like a, it's a hammer that breaketh a rock in pieces. Psalm 119, 105, it's a lamp under my feet to show me where I am now and a light under my path to show me how to, where to go later on. Psalm 119, verse 1 says, I'm to walk in it. Psalm 119, verse 2 says, I'm to keep it. Psalm 119, verse 6 says, I'm to respect it. Psalm 119, verse 7 says, I'm to learn it. Psalm 119, verse 9 says, I'm to take heed to it. Psalm 119, verse 10 says, I'm not to wander from it. Psalm 119, verse 11 says, I'm to hide it in my heart. Psalm 119, verse 13 says, I'm supposed to declare it. Psalm 119, verse 14 says, I'm to rejoice in it. I'm talking about the words of God. Psalm 119, verse 15 says, I'm to meditate upon them. In Psalm 119, verse 16 says, I'm to delight in them. In Psalm 119, verse 20, it says, I'm to long for them. In Psalm 119, verse 24, it says, I'm to seek counsel from the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 26, I'm to learn the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 27, I'm to understand the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 30, I am to choose the Word of God. In Psalm 119, verse 31, I am to stand with the Word of God. In Psalm 119, verse 32, I am to run the way of the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 34, I am to observe with my whole heart the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 35, I am to go in the path of the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 36, I am to incline my heart toward the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 42, I am to trust in the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 43, I am to hope in the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 46, I am to speak the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 48, I am to lift up my hands to the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 49, I am to remember the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 50, I am to be quickened by the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 51, I am not to decline from the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 54, I am to sing the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 59, I am to think on the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 61, I am not to forget the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 66, I am to believe all of the words of God. In Psalm 119, verse 80, I am not to be ashamed of the words of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the first place, how can I believe the words of God if I don't have the words of God? 
How can I receive the words of God if I don't have the words of God? Number one, we've got to have a perfect Bible. And I say it again. If you think the King James Bible isn't perfect, then trot out your perfect Bible. At least I'd have some respect for you. But don't have one minute's respect for people that say we don't have a perfect Bible somewhere. So this year, at First Baptist Church, we're going to read the Bible through together. Starting this Wednesday night, we're going to have a plan to pass out to you so that you can, we'll, together, we'll read the same chapters in the Bible every day. You'll read them in your place of business or your home. I'll read them in my, my study or my home. And we're all going to read the Bible all the way through together, a plan in 1998. Number two, we're going to memorize the Bible one verse a week. That way you'll know 52 verses this time next year, and if somebody puts a gun to your head, you won't have to die if you don't keep getting caught ten verses. We're going to memorize Psalm number one, to get one verse a week. We're going to memorize Psalm 1-1 one, one next week, Psalm 1-2 the next week, Psalm 1-3 the next week, all the way to Psalm 135. How many know Psalm 135? There's no 35 verses in the first Psalm. Carol, I'm sorry about that. But we're going to memorize it. Every week, we're going to memorize it. We're going to quote it together in all of our services. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, we'll quote one verse. We're going to memorize 50 verses. We're going to memorize the first psalm, the eighth psalm, the 121st psalm, 126th psalm, 127th psalm, and 149th psalm. I'm asking everybody in this room tonight to read with us the Word of God all the way through next year. I'm asking everybody to memorize one verse a week this time next year. And don't come to me with your stinking thought inspiration and mess up my, and, defi and stink up my drinking water. Don't come to me with your stinking, only the originals inspired. You're not intellectual. You're retarded. You are an exceptional child. You are an autistic adult. And I don't mean you paint pictures either. I have an awful tar hard time having an inferiority complex around somebody who hasn't got enough sense to believe the book. Don't come to me with your stinking versions. Get your dirty feet out of the, my Bible. Don't come to me with your condensed Bible. Get your stinking feet out of my drinking water. Don't come to me with your stinking amplified Bible. I said, yeah. Don't come to me. Get your, I said, get your stinking feet out of my drinking water. Don't come to me with your stinking vernacular Bible. Don't come to me with your stinking work salvation. Don't come to me with your stinking confessional of your sins to your priest. Don't come to me with your stinking lordship salvation. Get your stinking feet out of my drinking water. Don't come to me with your stinking invisible church. Don't come to me with your stinking bloodless mercy seat. Don't come to me with your stinking falling from grace. Don't come to me with your stinking baptismal regeneration. Don't come to me with your sacramental salvation. Don't come to me with your confirmation salvation. Don't come to me with your stinking lifestyle evangelism. Don't come to me with your stinking mid tribulation rapture. Don't come to me with your stinking NIV Bible. Don't come to me with your stinking Revised Standard Version. Don't come to me with your stinking New King James. Don't come to me with your stinking New Scofield. Don't come to me with your stinking ASV. Don't come to me with your stinking New ASV. Don't come to me with your Digest Condensed Version. Get your stinking feet out of my drinking water! I've got to have a perfect Bible. Bless God, I have it. You say, Brother Howes, aren't you afraid that the intellectuals will call you intellectual? My Bible says he's chosen a foolish thing that the world to confound the wise. Now listen carefully. You check that word foolish sometime in the original. Uh, original, but you check it in the Greek. It comes from the word the word moron comes from. God has chosen the morons of this world to confound the PhDs. 
That's probably the Latina has confounded so many people. Old Sam Jones used to say, I'd rather study my ABCs in heaven and Greek and Hebrew in hell. He used to say, I'd rather drive a tricycle to heaven than a car to hell. This is a position sermon. You folks that are visiting tonight, I'm sorry you came on tonight. Well, no, I'm not even. I'm glad you came tonight. He said, I'm not going to come back anymore. I, that's why I let you have the whole wagon load tonight. Brother, we've got to get back to the Bible that built this nation. We've got to get back to the Bible that built the great uh, the revival crusade that changed America. We've got to get back to the Bible that caused America to outlaw liquor one time. We've got to get back to the Bible that caused America not to even know what marijuana was. We didn't even, when I was a boy, we, we never heard the word marijuana. Nobody heard about it. We've got to get back to the Bible that made America an honest nation, a decent nation, a nation that kept their vows when they stood at the altar. A nation that had integrity and decency. A nation that paid their debt from the debt was due. And brother, listen carefully. I dare you to disprove this. I dare you to disprove it. I'm going to say right now. 